Good afternoon, good evening, aloha, how you doing? Uh, buenas noches. I am way too lighthearted here at the Prosperity and Health Alliance. It's our Monday night webinar. Last week we did the big one, and I'm joined today fresh from Mexico, my good friend, super trainer, Creel Hutchinson. How's it going today, Creel? Yeah, it's going great. Um, been home a few days. Um, so kind of got settled, um, got my long johns on, getting comfortable with the freezing temperatures in Vancouver. Uh, but it's so nice to go away and then come back and kind of transition in. So Monday I got back to work, so it's perfect. I'm on the webinar and ready to roll forward in 2017. You got it. It's great stuff. And uh, we're always delighted to have you on here. And I know uh, last week we went into a really deep deep webinar on kind of setting the tone for the year. It was a longer one. I kind of went through the entire kind of roadmap, if you will, to set up your game plan. If you haven't checked that out, go to the YouTube channel, pick up that, uh, that video because I think if you're there tonight at, or at any time or when someone else starts, I think you want to go back and review that and how do you set the game plan for the year, whether you're starting in January, whether you're starting tonight, or whether you're starting in December it, or, or some other time in the year. Having that game plan and the step by step, what's what's the goals, what's the objective, what's the potential obstacles, and of course the practices, the pre procedures, and the tools that you're going to need in order to achieve your goals. So that's a really really fun part. Uh, tonight uh, it's going to be a much shorter webinar. It's going to be much more concise. We've got the, uh, the the king of precision himself, Mr. Creel Hutchison. He's going to share a little bit uh, on the prospect analysis and just give you a background. I've been working with Creel for many years. For those of you who haven't seen the webinar. He's one of the top distributors in the company. He's highly organized, and I, I, I call him the, the optimizer of skills. He really is able to dive deep on a specific skill, decode exactly how to do that, and best of all, replicate it into a process that you and your teams can use moving forward. So without any further ado, I'm going to let Creel take over the show. Uh, at the end, please stay on. Till the end, we'll take any of your questions. All you need to do is type them into the questions. Whatever it is that you have burning, whether it's on tonight's webinar, whether it's something to do with the Enagic business that you had before, whether it's an obstacle that you might have, or anything else, we're here to help. We're here every Monday night at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And without any further ado, Mr. Krill Hutchison. Yeah, thanks so much, Wade. So uh, I'm going to take over from uh, where Wade left off with such a great uh, webinar last week with really the extended bullet point. It would be a webinar that you'd want to show a brand new person getting in. It's almost like a getting started, you know, the roadmap. I, I'm going to pick out a few key pieces uh, from that and uh, do a shortened version. Um, so sit back and uh, take some notes here. So let me get myself sized up. The PHE Alliance 2017, your time is now. Eventually, I think it's about making the decision and really leaning into something. And why not do that in 2017? Um, there's lots of things happening around the world. There's lots of things to grab your attention. But we've got something really exciting happening right here. You know, so here's my keys to success. Your new why. Goal setting, accountability, and game plan. And over the course of the, you know, the next seven, eight minutes, I'm going to go through those four areas and expand on them. But I really want to focus kind of on the first one is um, setting up your new why. When you get into the business and at different stages in the business, the motivation and the reason for being involved tends to change. Um, and I think at this time of year, you know, around the holiday season in January, um, it's a really great time to uh, take inventory of what's happening. So um, the new why really needs to sink in of where are you at? and where do you want to be and moving forward. And as you come to uh, understanding what that why is for you, I want to share the foundation that you get to make that decision on because I think it's really important for people to understand what they're holding and how that can fit into their why. So before we get deeper into the why, let's take a look at this, your opportunity. Sharing true health with compassion globally. That's Mr. Oshiro's mission. That's what you have an opportunity to really merge with and, and be a voice and a, um, you know, a, a mentor, uh, a leader in regards to. We help people with their health, wealth, and creating their dreams. We're dealing with the number one commodity in the world, which is water. We have a global distribution infrastructure. So we're 42 years old 
proven business model, proven healthcare technology. At first, 20 years, you could only get access to the technology inside Japanese hospitals. That worked so well. They made a home unit 22 years ago. They started to go international maybe 14 years ago. Um, this Friday in Vancouver, we celebrate 10 years in Vancouver. We have 30 offices in 20 different countries in a very aggressive global expansion. And why is this happening? Water is a huge issue. Healthcare is a huge issue. Home-based entrepreneurialism is growing. People are looking for um, opportunities to work from home. Um, global distribution technology, we have all that here in a model that works and we're solid from you know, the ground up. When I saw it six years ago, I knew that this opportunity was something that I could connect my reason, my why to, because I knew it was here to last. I was, had been involved in another um, network marketing opportunity before this, and I left that because the opportunity, the stability and the foundation of the company, in my belief, um, wasn't where it needed to be. So I found this, and based on what I'm showing you here, the hybrid network marketing compensation program that I got introduced to really showed me how I could make this work. And I'm happy to say six years later, it's really fulfilled it on a lot of levels. So um, don't look any further. Really see what we have and, and own it. So here's your opportunity. From here, figuring out does this opportunity work for you and how does your why fit into it. So revisit what's your motivation and your core or drive. Core drive for me is really about what do I get interested in? What, what moves me? What type of person am I? You know, that's my motivation. Because you're going to, once you get really connected deeply there, that's going to be what you're going to tell other people about. And you're really, you're looking for people that are connected to the same motivation and the same core ethics, core drives, which Wade covered last week really well. So revisit where you're at. Now this could be for a person just getting into the business, someone who's been in two years, someone who's a 6A, a 6A2, a 6A2-2, I'm six years in and every year I take the time to revisit, you know, what am I looking for now, how badly do I want it, and how committed I am, am I to my success? Am I kind of committed? You know, and we're, we'll talk about the game plan and really, you know, lock in accountability, but we want to start from these big questions and really kind of hone down to like the step-by-step -step process that we will follow. So what are you looking for? and how badly do you want it, right? Six years ago, I was looking for a business that I could travel the world, that would pay me more than I was currently earning, that had flexibility to grow, grow an international business, helping people with their health, and rewarding me for doing so. That's kind of what I was interested in. My core drive was helping people, health, and you know, being in, surrounded with good people with good values, right? When I found this, saw the team that was here, my why connected in, I saw the opportunity, and I moved forward. So know your why and dream big. I think often we do not dream big enough, so the dream has to be something that brings some fear into your life, gets excited and scary, or else it's just not big enough. When the times get tough, if your dream isn't big enough, it's easy just to let it flow by. Right? And we've all done that. We've had experiences. And this information I'm giving you is not new. We've heard this in so many different places. But take it to heart and really let it drive you to make some bigger decisions. So what would you do? What, what are you truly looking for in the ideal world? If money wasn't an issue, if time wasn't an issue, if your health wasn't an issue, what would be the lifestyle you'd want to create? Get really clear on that and understand, connect that to working this business and you can be unstoppable, right? Dream big. Goal setting. Where are you at? In order to go somewhere, you got to kind of know where you're currently at. So some people are at a brand new in the business, a 1A. Other people, 4A. Other people are at a 6A and everything in between, above and below. We all started as a 1A. So get clear where you at. Take that inventory. What's your skills? What's been working? What's not? You know, where have you seen success and where do you feel like, you know, there's some work to do? Get really honest. In your honesty, you'll be able to see where the work needs to happen in order to start achieving, you know, greater success and having your business grow, which is the key here. Uh, where do you want to be? From where you are to where you be. So that's your goal. Be radical in your dreams and goals. I think sometimes we play small 
where we want to play a little bit more bigger. It's got to be something that's going to be enough to scare you and excite you at the exact same time. If you're not scared about it, it's probably not big enough. And if it's not big enough, it doesn't bring that fear. You're not going to emotionally attach to it, which is key. You need to be emotionally invested in your why so that when times get tough, you stick it out. If you're not emotionally invested, times get tough, and you walk on to the next thing. Right? You flip the channel, and it's on to a hockey game. It's on to a movie night. It's on to whatever you like to fill your time with. So you've got to have the emotional connection to it. It's got to be scary. It's got to be exciting. Right? Fear. Your, greatest, your greatness and happiness is worth all the effort. Hearing Siha and Wade's stories to get to Dash 3 in 2016, they went through a lot of ups and downs and a lot of challenges, and they, they know it's all worth it. Right? Fear needs to become a motivation rather than an obstacle. It is the way. When you're experiencing fear, it's not about saying, oh, this can't be right. No, this is the path. This is the process. It's, it's about moving through it. Try new things. Reinvent yourself. Um, find inspiration. Find coaching, counseling to help you move through it. But the fear is part of, the, of this business. Anything worth doing, anything great worth doing has to be connected to fear. You know, there's, there's going to be that scary place of moving and becoming a better version of yourself, which this business, you know, as we like to joke, it's a personal development workshop with a fabulous compensation program. So as you grow as a person and you move through some of these uh, personality defects or personality obstacles or challenges um, and move through this fear, you will get openings and insights and success on the other side. So it's all worth it. Fear expected, uh, use it to your advantage. Take it as motivation. Countability, the mouse versus the lion approach. So some people follow up right up to this, and when they hit accountability, they decide to tell no one, which is being the mouse. And then the lion comes along, and it's kind of like a symbolism of telling a bunch of people, telling your sponsor, telling your upline leader who's most involved in this business telling your team members if you've got some people underneath you. People will move as fast as the leader will move. So you want to make the goals, make a commitment, get energy and emotion behind it, get your why there, and then you start to tell people. I recommend telling three people your goal and your game plan, which we'll talk about. Right? This sets in social accountability. Um, different people get motivated for different reasons. For myself, when I tell someone I'm going to do something, I follow through. If that changes, I revisited that conversation with them. So I hold myself accountable by sharing that with other people. Fabulous way to stay honest and truthful with yourselves. Right? So I really encourage you, find three people, tell them your goals, your dreams. Right? Set up accountability means setting up for success. This is do well documented in all the great literature that does personal development and success. People who achieve success have accountability accountability built into their system and their process. So why should your, your road to success be any different? Creating consistency over time. Accountability really allows us to set the game plan in play so that your efforts, which may look small in a week, but consistently over a 52-week period, add up. There's traction. You know, for example, here's one thing, not a business-related um, accountability, but I've decided because uh, I have such a great experience in Mexico, I'm going to be eventually uh, having a place down there, and my teacher speaks Spanish, that I want to be able to learn Spanish. So I booked one hour a week, which doesn't seem like a lot, but I figure over 52 weeks, that's 52 hours I'm investing into something that will move me along, right? So the same thing for this business. How many hours a week do you want to put in? Three hours, five hours. I think the sweet spot, if you can do eight to ten part-time bases, you're going to see a lot more traction. You know, if you're taking this more of a, you know, a real part-time, then you're up to like 15 to 20 hours. And if you're doing this full-time, you know, that could be 30 hours plus, right? There will be years that you will put more energy in when you're in really growth phases, and, and then it will dip a little bit. And there will be seasons within the year that you'll put way more effort in. That's all kind of part of it in the rhythm, but figuring out what your number is weekly and sticking to it. 
that's accountability, that's consistency, and that will lead to progress. A weekly and monthly check-in with your accountability partners. Weekly, just to keep you on the ball, but then a, a bigger monthly one in, because at times we can get really focused on what we're doing in a week, but then we gotta move back into the month, then a 90 days, six months, 12 month program, right? So if you've never had an accountability partner, isn't it worth trying it out once, twice, three times, get three people, get on board, have some fun with it, you know, and offer that to your team as well, you know, to reach out. Focus. What you focus on will grow. People either are going to be complaining or they're going to be seeing opportunity, right? You're going to focus on what's working or what's not working. It's good to be aware of what's work not working in your business, but then if that is motivation to find breakthroughs, to find what's going to be the success that will lead from it. So focus on your business. There's going to be distractions in the next 12 months that can totally derail someone's business. Be consistent in your hours and how you show up. Be prepared for that and just rule it out. Oh, your time is so valuable with family, work, recreation, your health. The allotted time here, you need to be very devotional on it. You know, nothing else gets in. So be prepared to slam the door on distractions. They are coming. Commit to your own personal development program. The better you become, the the better you will be in this business. There is no doubt about that. So always be reading and looking for additional information. There's all great stuff on the internet, so I don't need to go into that. Find something that resonates for you. Know your why. We keep coming back to this. You still, at the end of the day, need to be connected. What is driving you? What is the fire in the engine? Right? Seek out mentors and educators. We offer, uh, to the best of our ability, some of that education and mentorship here on Monday nights. Um, you'll also see we, that there's lots of other great coaches available within the Enagi community. There's Eli's calls on, on Saturday, um, uh, Miss Rayleigh's call on Saturday as well, um, and there's a bunch of other um, V team on Monday nights sometimes do stuff, Danny D. McCauley's. There's lots of stuff in Enagic, and there's also stuff outside of Enagic. If you want to um, start accessing Brendan Bouchard's, and the list goes on and on. So find mentors and educators. This is the fastest way to learn, to go through that learning curve of whatever you need to overcome. Success leaves clues. So follow successful people and ask people that are in the position that you want to be, how did they get there? Right. Stay focused, everybody. Here's the game plan. Attitude and posture. You gotta own this. You know, what core beliefs, what's your big why that all is brought into there? Consistency. This is the daily method of operation, right? What do you do throughout the week at consistent time periods to make this happen? You know, for people that are really part time, the eight to ten hours, I'd say like two to three chunks of activity is probably your best bet so you can get a little bit of a rhythm. Uh, I myself got my own rhythm, it starts 9 a.m. and I'm, I'm, I'm booked and I do that five days a week and then I do some um, kind of freer time on the weekends. But you've got to have your daily method of operation. 90 days all out massive action is what everybody who has broke ranks and achieved the higher levels of income and success in this industry, that's how they got there. I recommend doing it at least once every year. And I mean really doing it where it's like that's your focus for 90 days, you're, you're, in the, the, you're in the rhythm, you're in the mindset, you're saying no to other distractions for that 90 days. And then there'll be other periods throughout the year that you know, there'll be more fun and so forth. But follow Eric Worre's All Out Massive Action 90 Day Game Plan and how to recruit you know, 20 people in 30 days. There are some great webinars that explain all of that. For me personally, the months to do it are, are January to April because it's kind of work mode, everybody in the Western world is, is in that activity. And the weather's not that good. So why not work it now and take a little bit more time off maybe in the summertime. So here's the time to lean into this. Big ranks need big commitments and buy-in from their organization. If you're a senior leader, so you know 5A or 6A above, and you're looking to press a new rank, say go 6A2, that means you need to have commitments from your leaders in your organization. So that's where you phone calls and game plan meetings and getting together and really hearing where someone else is at and encouraging them to set a big goal and then you working with them to make sure they get there. 
this is a team sport. You cannot hit these big ranks alone. So you really need to combine that effort. So what I like to do every January is reach out to my key leaders, um, have a phone call or uh, a visit with them, find out how everything is going, and, and kind of lock in some plans and expectations and how I can be supportive. You know, that's what I do. So as bigger leaders on the phone are watching this, you know, I'm sure you already know this, but to teach this to your up and coming leaders, you know, everybody has got to be like looking to the leader, get the information, turn around, pass it along. So follow the system, promote and duplicate. We have the automated training system and that goes out and I apologize if anyone's getting you know double uh, emails. We've been hearing about that. We kind of a unique thing happened in the back end and so you know you get up to twenty four, so delete one and keep the other. It's not a big deal. But we feel like there's great value there that you can plug your team into it. You can plug new people into the system to get the webinars, to get access to the community, and so forth. The more you and your team connect to this, the greater success you will have, plain and simple. If people don't have that emotional connection to the technology, to the community, to the compensation plan, to their why, um, it's easier to walk away. So follow the system plug people in so that they realize they're part of something bigger than themselves you know, promoting a water technology. So that's really, really key. What our goal is, is to create massive awareness. You want to tell people what you're into, what you like, what your core beliefs are, what your interests are. You're going to tell stories. You're going to ask questions. You're going to create as much awareness as possible from your friends, family, on the internet. Um, whatever medium you want to explore, we're about expressing awareness around what you're into. And then you're going to look for people that are going to resonate with that, and then you're going to take them through you know, the inviting formula, which we've covered in another webinar and we'll get to again. But you're going to create that interest, share the information with them, you know, introduce them to technology, get them on a water trial, introduce them to the team, send them to a three-way uh, phone call with one of your leaders, um, send them videos, all that stuff, use our template emails within the uh, um, training system. You're going to get them to a decision moment and then you're going to get them to take action. Action in either becoming a really satisfied another Enagic customer or action being one of our business partners. This funnel system is really what our business is all about. So right now in the next 90 days it's about creating massive amounts of awareness so that you can ride that wave. The class of 2017 starts in this quarter. right? Where you want to be next December is really starting in the next three to four months. Create massive awareness, run with that interest, people are going to be making decisions and you're going to get lots of action. So step by step. I like this as just being short 10 steps. This is what basically 80% of the business looks like. You know, so here's the Enagic business overview steps. Number one. Get people interested in the product and business through asking questions, telling your story, and listening. Number two, invite them to take a look at the information related to their area of interest, product or business, sports, you know, um, technology, science. Number three, send one of our template emails or links to help them educate. You can either email this or a really great way to also shoot them a text. Less information is usually better at the beginning. One or two links is plenty of information with a book time for them to check it out. You know, spend 10 to 20 minutes looking at the, the links and then let's follow up with the phone call. Follow up, number four, follow up with a call to see what did they like best about the, the information sent. Super easy. Hey, what did you like best about the information I sent you? Quiet, listen to what they have to say. Number five. Repeat the inviting formula to provide more information. Handle objections, uh, handle questions or objections, uh, or get a three-way calls. So we want to keep doing the inviting formula over and over and over again so that we continue to provide value and information. Objections will come up, so we'll send more value and information to handle that. You know, answering questions, inviting someone to talk to one of your leaders that has a little bit more information so that they're going to handle that in a three-way call. Number six, you can offer a 21-day water trial to create more value. This is an optional step. It's not necessary all the time. Sometimes it is, so you know, the choice is yours depending on who you're talking to and how much you're listening to what they're looking for. 
Number seven, continue the education and inviting steps through three and five. Just keep adding more value. Number eight, explain the difference in the water systems, the financing, and the compensation plan. Right? When people are starting to look forward, you move them through the process. Now they want a system. What type of system? How do they want to get one? You know, the different um, startup costs that can be here. At what level do people want to enter in? How big a commitment do they want to make? A lot of that has to do with like them really understanding what's the financial re return on investment. And we've got great videos um, to show people how to do that. Number nine, place the order immediately. Don't wait. When someone's ready to buy, you need to sell. I've seen several sales, probably you know, 20 sales over the last six years, when people don't process the paperwork when someone's ready to buy, or they don't ask the question when the person's ready to purchase, the, the moment changes and then it's gone. So when you have that, don't wait, do everything. If you need to do it on a Friday, then waiting for a Monday, do it on the Friday. Right? Don't wait until the Monday because something will happen on the weekend and all of a sudden it changes and someone gets scared and Uncle Sam from Utah showed up and you know, he thinks X, Y, and Z about what the decision that your prospect is about to make. So act. You're in business. You know, so when business needs to happen, you need to be there to act. Number 10, duplicate. Repeat the process and connect with new people to the PH Alliance training system so that they can start learning. It's about creating that massive awareness and taking as many people through these 10 steps as possible. If you talk to 100 people, you're probably going to get about 10 to 15 sales. Talk to 500 people, you're going to be a 6 a You're going to get about 100, 125 people through the program. Right? So you want to really decide where you want to be and use those numbers. One out of 10 will be a buyer if you do the process correctly. You can move that up to 2 out of 10, which is great, 20% in sales is fabulous, with refining and being better at the skill set. So those are the 10 steps that I use over and over again. And I try to, a friend asked me, hey, you know, so what exactly do I do? And I'm like, well, you basically do this over and over and over again and leverage the tools in the system that's available and your, your network, your you know, stuff online, these webinars, um, your team, your sponsor. So to another year of having the gold standard in an adjunct 2017, um, super excited once again to be involved. This is going to be year number seven for me. And uh, I want to really encourage people who are sitting back watching this uh, to take some action. Really take to heart what I've laid out here. Make some goals. Build in your accountability. Follow the steps and have success. And have a lot of fun doing it. So, on that, I want to encourage anyone who's uh, online right now, um, put in some questions for me and Wade. I'll invite Wade back to the program. Put in some questions in the chat window, and we would love to uh, take you through the process of answering those. Um, if you've got any announcements or any stuff coming up, feel free to uh, put it there. So with that, um, let's go back and enter to the questions. Wade, do you want to make any um, comments, feedback on... Uh, uh, yeah, point. yeah, great job, Krill. Uh, I think it's really, uh, really important. I love how you always lay out things so simply and clearly. And uh, you know, I remember attending um, a Harvecker, T. Harvecker event years ago, and he said, "You know, business needs to be nice and boring. You figure out your process, and you just kind of keep turning this over." And a lot of people. I think when they get involved in this business, uh, they start creating a lot of drama for themselves and the people around them. And he had a saying that was, when drama goes up, income goes down, and when drama goes down, income goes up. And I think it's really, really simple. Um, everybody needs our technology. Not everybody is going to get it. It's our job to expose as many people as possible to it and take them through a process that allows the people who are ready to buy now to execute and the people who are ready to start a business and do the business now to take them through a training process to do the, to, the same thing. That's really what we do. We teach people about the water and we teach people <laughs> about the business and we plug them into the system. And if you can just really grasp that as a distributor, and, and, and just leave it at that and recognize that we're, we, we don't want everybody. We, you don't want people 
that are into drama, that aren't into your teams, that aren't going to do the work, that you're trying to raise up to figure things out, the business will be challenging and will be difficult and you'll be going to your upline with, with uh, non-income producing challenges because you're trying to get people that don't get it to do this. Uh, if you just turn it over to a process and you did it so eloquently, hey, talk to you know 100 people, you're going to get 10, 20 machines. Talk to 500 people, you're probably going to be a 6A. And, and, and all it is is just taking the skill set, and Eric Worre lays out the skill set, we lay out the skill set, the, all the information is inside of you, and, and frankly, it's getting, the skill set is getting easier and easier to do because there's so much replication. Then life becomes really simple and really easy. There's not a lot of drama. You turn it out, you look how many hours you put in, you check your results, you go back, and you just hone the skills that you need to do. That's all it is, a refinement over a period of time. And if you do that, you get to have an amazing business and you get to have an amazing life and you get to impact a lot of people. If you've got a better way, um, tell us. I'd love to know. Uh, but what I, what I see over and over with leaders like Creel, leaders like Siha, leaders like Romy, leaders like uh, Danny D. McCauley, the list goes on and on. They all have a process. They all execute that process. They have different personalities, different things, but they, they have their process and they do it. But I will say this, the all-out massive action, this is key. Um, it's way easier to do this business if you do it fast. Um, it's way easier to build, especially when you start out, building that momentum takes, it takes a lot of juice to get things going. And with the sales cycle of this business, your efforts that go in now, so some people are going to come out of the gate, maybe they started last week, they're out there turning and burning, they're motivated, uh, and they haven't yet produced that result. You have to realize it's not going to happen this week. It's not going to happen next week. It's not going to happen the week after. It's, you, you start that process today, and those sales are going to start coming in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, even up to you know weeks later, maybe even a little bit longer. It's it the cycle to this as you move through people through people to it, and everybody goes at their different pace. As you get better and more successful, that window starts to tighten down and hone a little bit more. But just know that it takes time, and anything worth doing takes time. And be patient with yourself. Check in. Uh, and, and just keep working your skills. And it's just really that. And, and, and try not to beat yourself up, I think, is, is, is really, really important. I think a lot of people go out there, they see the numbers, they have big dreams, and they, or, or they see people making a lot of money, as some of our leaders are, and they think, well, they, they don't realize where that person came from and the processes and the emotions that, that, that come with it. So we're here to support. But in order to do that, we need your questions. So please turn on the questions. We've got the first one here, uh, which is from Noel Rodriguez. Hey, Noel, great to see you. Great to have you on the call today. Uh, and it's, um, hi, Creel, mate. Thanks very much for your help and your experience. With what specific demographics, traits, identity that a prospect will turn out to be a motivated, successful distributor or business builder? Um, I'll, I'll answer that first, and I'll let Creel stop in there. In my experience, um, I think I touched on this briefly last week. It's someone who, number one, has a big reason why they need to do a magic. Um, two, for the most part, a lot of them are coming out of some kind of crisis. There's been something that's jarred them, and they're ready to make a difference. It could be a breakup. It could be a financial shift. It could be a um, shift in finances, the loss of income. Particularly, I've noticed people that were used to making a lot of money, and then this changed. They looked for something else, whether it was downsizing, whether it was a corporate change, whether it was something like that then they go to the next level. Uh, but to understand that um, those are generally probably 90% of the people who are successful in this industry are following that kind of demographic or that type of thing. Number one, big reason why. Two, 
some kind of shift that's happened in their life, and, and, and three, uh, usually some expert, some, some experience and success in somewhere else in their life. And it doesn't have to be business success. I've seen, for example, a lot of, of like really successful moms and dads who spent maybe 10, 15, 20 years, 25 years raising kids or working on that, and then now they got a little space and they decided they, they were going to get into a business and, or their kids were growing up enough that they could do this, and they took off in this business. So success doesn't always have to be financial success. It can be success in other areas. Um, but that why factor is usually a big one and some sort of usually paradigm shifter to kind of look at this business with open eyes and objectively look at it as, as someone. So if they're not willing to look at it or if they're the type of person that's never had success in their lives or if they're the type of person that's into drama and excuses, I don't see a lot of those people uh, successful, so I, I frankly avoid them. Uh, I'm, I, those are all great points, Wade, and I agree with you. Um, so rather than duplicating that, I'll just add a couple other things. Um, I look for people that have hustle, that have a bit of, you know, I think that ties into the, the why. There's a They've done stuff in the world. They've been involved with different things. It doesn't have to be necessarily um, business stuff, but they've got a passion and an interest, and they got a good energy that I, I want to hang around them. I like they're they're up to something. There's some life force with them um, because that's what will be attractive. Um, that will attract other people in. When you're someone who doesn't complain, who's excitable, who's asking questions, all that stuff. These are these people make great business partners. Um, that there's you know sometimes you wonder if someone's got a pulse you know and it's it's not a personal thing but it, there's just not a lot of energy there. There's they're kind of laid back versus someone who's like you know they don't have to be loud in the room but they're they've got a life force to them and that they're they're excitable and and there's a good energy. These people are, are very dynamic in the world. And if we, you can focus them into this project and really connect what they're truly looking for, that this is a vehicle to get there, you can have a great business builder. And I have found um, hustle is just something that needs to be part of it. Anyone who's gotten to 4A and above has, at some point, um, gotten some hustle on. And 6A and above, uh, these people like know how to work. So. Um, I have found that there's uh, a lot of people just don't have that built in, um, and it's going to require sacrifice to get to the top rank. So um, those are some aspects, and through my interviewing process, asking questions, finding out where someone else, I can kind of detect, you know, if they've got it, um, and if this is going to be a good fit to them, and you know how much energy and uh, I'm going to lock in and invest. So that's kind of my feedback on on those kind of demographics of what that qualities look like in, in a good distributor. And I think you said something really queer, uh, really uh, perfect, and that was when you interview them. Uh, when you take that posture, and when a distributor takes that posture of you're interviewing people for your business as opposed to trying to get people into it, it's a very different feeling, and it go and, and you start looking at your business through a different filter. And I think that's, if I was to say, there's any difference between the person starting out and the person at that you know mega financially successful level, that would be the change in posture. And 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 if the sooner you make that change in posture. The more clarity you get around the business, the more clarity you get around the decisions that you're making, the more clarity about how things work out in your business starts to happen. So I think that's a very clear designation. And, and, and you develop, frankly, you develop this over time. And we always want to sell machines, we, and, and, and we always want to make sure we're talking about the product. A lot of people just want to have the machine, and, and, and that's great. We, I love customers. But to have a distributor where you're going to take the time, you're going to take the effort, you're going to coach them, you might do demos for them, you might do you know, 
take, you know, help them out in whatever they need in regards to becoming successful, well, then you want to be careful about who you bring in business. And, uh, and, and be okay with that. And what's interesting is people pick up on that posture. And uh, so treat it as a business, um, not as something you're trying to just get somebody to, or if I get them, it's more like, what, what, what do I want out of my life? What do I want out of my business? Who do I want to work with? And, uh, and how do I want to operate? And you get to choose that here. And I think that's a, that's a really empowering thing um, to, to have. So um, uh, let's see if we have any more questions. I don't see any more. We'll give you a couple more minutes, and then we'll turn it off. Um, yeah, all you need to do is you go down to the uh, chat box or the question box, and you type in your question. If you have that waiting. burning question. As we're waiting for that, I just, uh, I'll just make a, a couple of announcements. Um, if you're in yes, the please. Vancouver area, uh, Friday night, the Enagic office is having their 10th uh, anniversary uh, celebration party. Um, it's $40 a ticket. Um, that includes dinner and entertainment. Registration starts at 5 o'clock. Um, party starts at 6 p.m. onward. Um, and it's going to be at the Hilton in um, the Burnaby area. Um, I've got a couple tickets left at my table um, if you want to jump on. Um, and the office also has 10 packs available if you've got a whole team to come out. But uh, reach out and um, let people know. If, you, if you've got guests in the area that maybe you feel would be a good fit, connect them in with the team, and we'd love to host them at the event. It should be a really fun time, and look forward to seeing um, a bunch of the people that are on, you know, regulars on the webinar. We'll see you on Friday night, and looking forward to it. Yes, and uh, just to follow up on that, uh, I will be there uh, back from my trip here to Central America. I'll be in town for about 10 days, and then I'll be off uh, and out of Canada for an extended period of time. So. I do hope to see all you Prosperity and Health Alliance and the Magic people. I can't wait to be there. Um, Creel's going to be there. Uh, look forward to uh, you know uh, helping you out this year, celebrating 10 years uh, in, as a Magic in Canada. That's a that's, that's an amazing thing. There's going to be some special things going on. Can't say anything about it, but you don't want to miss it. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm really excited about 2017. And Magic uh, had a banner year last year. Uh, we've got a lot of great things happening at Enagic this year. Uh, it's kicking off with a global convention in Okinawa coming up. There'll probably be another convention later on in the year. Uh, very, very exciting uh, stuff coming up. So uh, really, really, really uh, pumped. Uh, Rodney, I guess he's just put a click, click in or curl. He needs some more tickets. So if you guys can connect up after, uh, we can make that happen. Uh, but more importantly, I want to just say from my partners, uh, to you guys from the Prospering Health Alliance. This is a real honor. Um, it's a real pleasure, and I'm so delighted to be on this team and to have people such as Seha and Krill and uh, Kim, of course, who's always in the background making this happen, uh, have this. And I'm going to invite you, and I'm going to reach out to you this year, if you are a 6A or above, please contact me because we want to bring in some of you to start sharing your components of the business, the things that are working for you, the processes that you're going to do, and uh, we want to bring you on this year for you to share your wisdom, your insights for you and for your team, and also for your expanding vision going forward uh, to your teams as they reach out around the world. So we're going to be talking to you more about that. I look forward to seeing you all. Um, I'll uh, close it up with, uh, I want to thank Creel for sharing his information tonight. I want to thank him to be on the team. I want to thank you for being here. And most importantly, I would love for you to commit to your business. Take the next 90 days. Really, really dive deep and go for this. And we look forward to seeing you at one of the major events and, of course, every Monday night here at the Prosperity and Health Alliance. So with that, I want to thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody.